All right, so it's gonna start working its magic here. Come on, pull down. Oh, here it goes. Here it goes. Pull it down on the spike. And yes, it did it. Oh, jeez, it just pulled it down into the ground. Want to keep up with the latest Komodo gaming videos? Be sure to subscribe and click that bell. Hello YouTube, Komodo Gaming here for you guys. Hey, another episode of Floating Sandbox, and yes, folks, we are back once again. And today, we are back with a brand new update in this game. I'm actually really excited because they've added some new ships. You're looking at one of them here. But we've also added several new features, and we did add one more new aircraft. Or I shouldn't say aircraft, it's actually the Hindenburg is uh, one of the items they've added to the game. So we're gonna be checking all this out. I actually took some viewer requests that you guys wanted to see from the last episode. And the first thing that we're gonna do here today, and I don't know how I didn't think about it. So last episode, we created a spike and the spike was rather tall and we ran the ship into the spike and we realized that we can make the whole ship disappear. Oh, there it is! <laughs> Well, one thing that I didn't do, and a lot of people are like, Komodo, why didn't you just leave the spike a little bit out of the water? That way the top part of the ship shears off and flies to the other side. And I was like, man, I'm a dingus. How did I not think of this? So I present to you our first test of the day. Let's go ahead, grab this. Uh, this is gonna be glorious and yes! <laughs> How did we not do that last time? Actually, that took off way more than I expected. Now another thing you're seeing, this is one of the new features, and I've got it accelerated. If you notice there, which this is making a horrible racket, let's go ahead and reload it real quick. Uh, one of the new features is called a, a decay or a rot feature. So, say if we were to sink a ship here, let's go ahead, we'll do the slice, we'll just do the good old cutting down the middle here. There we go, a little bit of a, a pretty aggressive cut we'll call it. You know, and let's cut a couple little bowls here, that way we can accelerate the sink. So what you're going to notice here, and I've got it turned up, you don't have to have this on, but as soon as the ship's going underwater, it's actually decaying here. Now, I really think this would be a pretty neat thing to have on, but have it slow, so your ship can hit the bottom of the ocean and then slowly disappear. Uh, right now, it's up really, really high, and you can see that the ship is slowly just getting eaten away. Looks a little strange. Still got the backbone of the ship that's holding up. But yeah, I thought that was a pretty cool little feature. Now, another tool that I figured out, well, actually, I haven't figured this tool out, I should say. Another tool that they've added, which, correct me if I'm wrong, was the scrub tool ever a thing? It looks like a sponge, and I was reading through, like, the patch notes, and I don't think I saw anything about this, and I cannot figure out what this tool does. Like, I was like, okay, are we gonna clean the ship, or can we, like, scrub pieces off of it? And I'm not really sure, so if anybody knows, uh, comment below with what is the scrub here. But anyways, uh, we're going to be checking out new ships here today, new sinks, trying some old things, uh, trying a lot of viewer requests. So if you guys are enjoying Floating Sandbox on the channel, maybe hit that thumbs up button. And if you guys have any suggestions, uh, maybe certain ships you want to see or certain things to do to the ships, let me know down in that comment section below. Alright, so the ship you're looking at here is actually one of the new ships. Uh, this is the HMHS Britannic. If I'm not mistaken, this thing, uh, it got shot with a torpedo, I believe. I could be completely wrong. Uh, but this is pretty neat because this ship actually has lights. Now, I don't know if the lights, do they actually go out or do they just stay on? You can kind of faintly see them. Uh, I noticed they've added this to several ships, including the Titanic. So, we're going to grab the smash tool. Somebody suggested this... What the... What just happened? Wait, what did I do? Hold on, I didn't do that. Wait a minute. Did I turn on ultra-violent mode? That was one of the requests that somebody wanted to see. They're like, hey, hit the smash tool with ultra-violent mode. Uh, huh, let's turn down the rot real quick. I have a feeling that's exactly what... Oh, yep, look at that. Okay, well, that answered one of the requests. Uh, hold on. Can I just tap it? What happens if I just tap? Really? <laughs> that is ridiculous. Okay, let's reload that one more time. Um, I didn't mean for it to quite go like that. Let's go ahead and just go reload. Okay, can I just take a little off the top? Say if I do it over here. Okay, no, I have to be on the ship. Or right, what's the radius of this? So, are you serious? 
Okay, that is a lot more aggressive than I thought it would be. Another thing people wanted to see is me actually using the grab tool with the ultra violent mode, which I noticed it's actually not... Oh, okay, maybe it's a little bit different because we are getting really high up in the air right now. Hold on, slam her down. Oh no, she almost touched the sea floor there with just slamming it down. Wow, that was pretty awesome. Hold on, let's go ahead and... Uh, what happens if I just drop it? Hold on, we need to raise it out of the water. All right, and then... Oh no, I tore my ship. Are you kidding me? I probably should have put the strength up. All right, well, here it comes. It's going to have some momentum now. It did lose a little bit of weight. Uh, let's see what happens when it comes down. Oh, wait, you can actually hear the electricity going out. All right, so that is a thing. Is that going to touch? Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Oh, where's the other piece? Oh, here it comes. I still wish the two pieces could collide together. I wish that was like an option. I don't know, maybe that will be in the future. But yeah, that was uh, something that you guys actually suggested I do. I really want to do the shear thing again, but I think we're going to pull out one of the other new ships uh, before we do that because there's some really cool stuff here. So let's pull out something else. All right, so we're ready for our next ship. And folks, we finally have a cargo ship, which looks absolutely amazing. And I must say, the scale on this thing is huge like check that out it's also got a lot of detail I love all the writing on all the uh, the cargo containers which some of them are actual companies i believe even the the line or the uh, cargo ship itself if i'm not mistaken not unless it's slightly misspelled i believe this is actually a real company too now one thing i do want to show you so we're going to take a picture of this see how much bigger this ship is compared to some of the other ones that we've checked out here is your Titanic in the exact same spot. So, folks, the cargo ship is massive. Now, that's not to say that everything's to scale as far as the pictures, because it's probably not. But as far as in the game, this is definitely the biggest ship that we've destroyed yet. So, let's get to the destruction part. Alright, so I guess the first thing we have to test is the cargo containers. Are those loose? Uh, no, no, they seem to be solid. Yeah, they're sticking together. Alright, so we have debunked that, because I know there's other ships, which we're going to check one out here in a second, which I think it's a German battleship, or a German carrier, I should say. It has loose planes on it. So, hmm, what shall we do to this? It feels like there's so much force here, that I feel like we're going to have to repeat this one time. We've got to do the scrub test, like we did earlier. So we're going to go about to there. Okay. Hmm. That looks pretty good. I think this is going to probably not hold up at all, but it's going to be absolutely amazing. So let's go and get the grab tool here. There we go. All right. Oh. oh! We have completely torn off almost the whole red section there. Oh, that was cool. That was really cool. All right, and she's trying to hold herself up. Man, the front part of the boat is absolutely trying to keep itself afloat. It's actually, wait, it actually looks like the, wait a minute, the containers. Do the containers act as buoys? Do they not fill with water? Hold on, hold on, let's slice. All right, let's cut the containers off real quick. Let's go, boom. Do these float to the surface? Look at that. That's actually really cool. Yeah, hold huh? on, completely separate those. We can save the cargo, so we can get all those nice TVs and whatever else they're carrying in here. We don't worry about the crew, we just want the stuff that's inside. You know, maybe it's Microsoft, new Xboxes or something, hold huh? on, let those float up to the top. <laughs> that's actually really cool. I didn't expect that. Now, it does look like they are taking on water. Actually, it looks like they've stopped. Like, that is the stopping point right there, hold huh? on, let's just go, uh, uh, okay. See, that's one thing that's really neat about this game. Like, you would think, all right, the ships are just pictures. They're not any different from each other. But then you have something like this that proves that the cargo containers, like, they don't hold water. So it proves that you can actually do different things with the ship. I think that's why this thing was having such a problem going down, too, because the cargo containers are holding it up. It's like buoys. I like that. All right, so we still have to run some of our other standard tests on this particular ship. And that's going to include the antimatter bomb, which somebody said... Komodo, you gotta have ultra-violent mode on with the antimatter bomb, which I kind of like that, and I kind of don't. Like, I feel like, let's try it without it first, and we're gonna go and activate those. Holy man, the game's actually lagging right now. Whoa! 
Wait, we just ripped it in half. Have we not done that by sticking those that far apart? I don't know. I don't think we've ever seen that effect before. So we actually pulled it apart. So what does ultra-violent mode do with that? Oh, let's reload the ship. Okay. Let's go ultra-violent mode with the antimatter bombs. Let's go boom. Did we do... Actually, we probably did all corner. You know what? It's fine. I don't think it's going to make a bunch of a difference as far as the corner there. All right. There we go. Wait. Wait, ultra-violent? Did I hit apply? Oh, I didn't hit apply! Oops, my bad. That was a dingus move there. All right, so we're gonna make sure ultra-violent mode is on for this. So let's go corners, boom, 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 boom. It wasn't already on, was it? I don't think it was. Hold on, here we go. Oh, wait, is it? Hold on, why is it blowing it slower? It seemed like that was much slower that time. Okay. You know, I'm not going to question it. It still does a magnificent job, but that's almost kind of strange. I, I feel like that should have been way more aggressive. All right, so I want to make sure I'm not crazy here. So let's do that one last time. Corner, 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 and corner. So I've reversed the effect of ultraviolet mode. And, okay, so it is a lot slower now. Oh! Oh, so I must have had it on the whole time. Oh, no. Wait, what's it doing with it? It's pulling it down. What the heck? Okay. Wait. Okay. <laughs> Every time I do something, I get another idea. You, you guys saw how that worked, right? It pulled it down in this mode. So what if we were to have a spike waiting for it? That could be absolutely insane. So I need to cut this bad boy down real quick. There we go. And we're going to make one spike right here. So it's going to come down, rip itself in half, or slice itself, I should say, on this spike, and then pull itself apart. This is going to be great. I really need to move on to a new one, but this might be my new favorite creation. Uh, my old one was definitely the Titanic, but geez, this thing is so massive, it's awesome. Alright, so here we go. So it should pull itself down. Alright, force it down on the spike. Wait, why is it... All right, go down, go down. You need to go down. Uh oh, this is gonna get ugly. Oh, here it goes. Oh no, it didn't make it to the spike that time. Oh, was the thing too far away, or I don't know. I feel like that should have worked. Jeez, that makes a huge mess. Oh man. All right, let's do it again. Okay, so I get a feeling that using just two antimatter bombs towards the bottom is gonna actually pull this down. So here we go. All right, so it's going to start working its magic here. Come on, pull down. Oh, here it goes. Here it goes. Pull it down on the spike. And yes, it did it. Oh, jeez, it just pulled it down into the ground. Oh, that was like so satisfying. Ah, oh, that was amazing. Okay, you know what? We got to stop doing this. We got to move on to something else. There's other ships that are new that we can check out, but that was... That was oddly satisfying watching that rip. I mean, it ripped it like paper. All right, so the next ship's called the GRAF Zeppelin. It's a 1938 ship. Now, check this thing out. Very, very cool. Obviously, it's a, it's a German ship, which, you know, before YouTube demonetizes me, let's go ahead and go. Uh, there we go. We'll just cut that off and put that to the back. All right. So, it does have loose planes. I'm kind of curious about these planes. Like, I kind of wish they I guess the whole fact that things can't interact with each other they just kind of drop into the uh, into the ground there but or I should say water one thing can we grab them like say if we were to get the grab tool here and put it up it's so weird that it wouldn't grab those since they're so light compared to trying to grab the whole ship uh, are they not actually separated from the ship they've got to be I don't under oh 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 we broke it well, we definitely broke it on. Oh, I guess we get to see its compartments here and see how it sinks. Wait, I never thought about actually... Can I grab down? There we go. We can just try to submerge it. You know, I probably need to be on ultra-violent mode for the grab tool to see if we can pull it down. That's kind of cool again. Oh, there go the planes. Oh, and the planes are running into the bottom of the ocean. Uh, keep grabbing. Keep grabbing. <laughs> We're just going to make this whole thing disappear. Oh, uh, what would ultraviolet mode do to that? Hold on, let's release it real quick. There it goes. 
She's going vertical, but you can see the stress and the fracture starting to kick in there. That. Okay, hold on. Let's try to pull it out. It looks, uh, it looks pretty weird, actually. Uh, I guess that's going to be its stress point. Hold on. Is it still attached to the other end? I don't think. Oh, it is. Oh, look at that. It's actually still... Oh, never mind. Oh, never mind. Oh, it had water in it. It made it a lot heavier as it hit the water. All right, so she is really, really screwed up now. <laughs> Uh, very cool ship though. It's just another one of the designs that they've added. I think another test that we need to run and this is something hold on Yeah, there we go. All right. This is something that I, I want to do that something I guess we really haven't played too much with We really haven't screwed with the waves as much as we should have I know we've done it in sinking simulator, which by the way, we had an episode of that the other day absolutely amazing but is there a way to make the waves really big here? Is it all based on wind? Huh, let's go wind gust. Let's go ahead and put that up. There we go. All right, and world. I guess we can go to wave height. Yeah, this, this is one thing that Sinking Simulator it definitely has over it. Sinking Simulator, there's like no end to the waves. Like, that is the max, not unless ultra-violent mode changes something, which it might. So let's go to interaction. Okay, ultra-violent mode. It doesn't change the waves, does it? Okay. So, water detail, water density. I'm trying to find a way to make the waves more aggressive. I guess you really can't. Like, that is it. Maybe the wind gust? Hold on, let's see if everything will just fly here. All right, wind gust. There we go. Okay, so the wind does actually affect the water in the game, but it still doesn't feel like it does it enough. You know, one tool I would actually really like to see would be like a tool that you can grab the waves and create like a tsunami and rush it through and see what it would do to a ship. I think that would absolutely be amazing. Now, question is, where does this ship need to be or what weakness does a ship need? like this in order to crack from the waves so i think we go to strength adjust let's go down about half of what it was all right three two one go oh on I swear i'm hearing a little more noise but i don't think it's oh it's trying to crack it i don't think it's enough for the waves to crack it though all right i think we need to go a little more aggressive don't you guys think let's go ahead and go to strength adjust this isn't strength of the waves, it? I, th I think it's actually the strength of the creation. Let's go down a little bit more. Oh, there it goes. That is what rips it. Those waves are pulling it apart. Oh, I love the destruction. You know, it's so weird because the game is really just like drawings and stuff. But for some reason, the destruction on this game just feels so right. Or uh, so wrong, depending on if you get offended by things. But yeah, that is awesome. Last but not least, now there is other ships that we have not checked out, other things, but I thought it would be really cool to check out the Hindenburg model that they've added here into Floating Sandbox. So here she is, and I'm gonna get demonetized again. Yeah. Cut that off and cut that off. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute, I get the... Wait! Okay, she just deflated like a balloon. Is this a new material in the game? Hold on. What we need to do here, I need land. I can't do this in the water, so let's go uh, settings and let's uh, bring up the ocean depth real quick. All right, we're gonna need to build the old Hindenburg here, a little bit of a landing pad. Uh, would that be okay? Oh, you know what? This is probably not gonna work, is it, Han? Uh, that looks somewhat soft, right? All right, let's reload the Hindenburg. Look at that. It actually has a soft material. Like, it is definitely not made of what the ships are made of. Now, if I could catch it quick enough, uh, which we're going to use the move tool here. Let's go ahead and reload it one more time. Okay, move, move. Okay, I got it. Look at that. It actually flexes a lot different. This is a first. I have not seen this in Floating Sandbox. I'm just not going to show the back part of the ship because obviously it is a, it is a German ship. Uh, or airship, I should say. But... I've never seen this, so I like how this actually, uh, you could deflate it. So if we were to stick it up here, would a gust of wind actually kill this thing? I kind of think it would. Hold on, let's go. Oh, come on. Let's get the options out. Uh, let's see. Air. Wind. Let's go. Wind speed base. Everything. You know, just go up and up. All right, ready to make the Hindenburg take off? I like how it actually, it's a lot slower to fall, too. 
All right, here comes the gust. Oh, it just stripped it. It just stripped everything off it. <laughs> okay. Uh, apparently the Hindenburg and wind do not get along. Uh, that and fire, but we don't have a fire tool yet. Maybe that'll be a thing in the future. Uh, oh, wow. I like the way that looks, though. I like how it just kind of actually looks like it's made of a, a correct material. I had a feeling it was going to be made out of, like, uh, metal or something, but no, definitely not. I'm trying to think of what else we could do to it. I mean, it's so flimsy. It's kind of hard to tell. Oh, let's throw it up in the air. We could cut it, but I like how it actually floats. Hold on, let's get down on it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it doesn't float that great, but it, I mean, it does a decent job at floating. Uh, let's see. Let's go, tools. Oh, there it goes. Oh, let's keep it up in the air with the antimatter bomb. There we go. Oh, oh, that immediately ruined its day. <laughs> Oh, and it's going to suck it up completely. Oh, there it goes. And it's going to poop it all back out. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And there we go. It's a bunch of floaty bits now. I really do like the change in the material, though, because it definitely comes down a lot slower. And we've pretty much just rained down on everything. I'd like to see more of these. I'd like to see a traditional blimp without the uh, certain symbol on there. That way I feel a little more safe uh, showing it on YouTube. But other than that, that is uh, pretty amazing. I like the whole fact that it is like completely different. So hopefully we'll be seeing more creations like that soon. But anyways, I think that's going to wrap it up for this episode of Floating Sandbox. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. We'll check out some of the new ships next episode. Never know, maybe there'll be another update by the time we do that episode too. But I do want to thank you guys for all the love and support on this series. You guys are absolutely amazing. And we will see you guys next time.